You're watching Good Day Tampa Bay, and the news starts now. This hour on Good Day Tampa Bay, details are developing in a shooting at a teen club in Tampa. More on what we know so far. Plus, long lines in California for the first day of recre re recreational marijuana sales. A law less than a day old drew big numbers from unlikely customers. And Tampa Bay, bundle up. The cold weather is here, and it is not going away as quickly as, quickly as some would like. Welcome to the 6 o'clock hour of Good Day Tampa Bay. I'm Walter Allen. And I'm Laura Moody. We are waking up this morning with a chill in the air, Dave. Talk about it. <laughs> but it just got here. Why are you in such a rush for it to leave? No, what did you say? It's warmer in Alaska right it's now than it is It's warmer in Kodiak, here. Alaska than it is in Tampa right now. That's weird. Okay, so we, let's start with the wind chill advisory because even though... We're sitting at 41 degrees. It feels more like 32. So we've got this wind chill advisory out through 10 o'clock this morning with these winds that have been gusting at 25, 30 miles per hour this morning. These numbers are your current air temperatures. 39 in Brandon, 38 Wesley Chapel, 38 Newport Ritchie, 37 Brooksville, 36 in Crystal River, south of Tampa along the coast, lower 40s and some mid 40s inland. But then you factor in that wind I was just talking about, and it feels like 27 degrees in Crystal River, 29 in Brooksville, 34 in Tampa, feels like 32 in Clearwater and Lakeland. Even when we get rid of this, uh, this uh, wind chill advisory, we're going to struggle today. Uh, cloud cover, temperatures getting only back to the lower 50s for highs for today. Normally, 70 is where we should be. We're going to be nowhere close. We do have rain in the forecast for tomorrow morning. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, okay? All right, David, I know you mentioned it was breezy out there. So really the only traffic related incident we have, it's actually weather related, but it is affecting the Skyway Bridge, just a wind advisory for folks who are going to be crossing the water here. We don't have any closures happening on the bridge right now, but if you have a high profile vehicle, you want to take extra care, maybe give yourself extra room between your vehicle and others from grip on the uh, steering wheel and slow down as necessary. Uh, the other thing we're watching is a police scene. So this is not a traffic incident either, but there could be a detour happening if you head through the area. 50th Street near Idlewild Avenue. So keep that in mind and uh, more on that police scene right now. Vanessa, thank you. 602 the time. We're following a developing story in Hillsborough County. Two people are dead inside a car and they may just be teenagers. And Fox 13's Kelly Cowan is live for us at the scene. This is in Hillsborough County near 50th Street with more on this. Good morning, Kelly. Hey, good morning to Laura and Walter. We know that two people are dead, a male and a female. We're not sure exactly how old they are, but we do know that this is a teen club that was going on last night. I'll step out so you can take a look at it. And we know that multiple shots were fired. We can see multiple shell casings still on the ground here as investigators continue to look into exactly what went on here last night. What we do know is that those two victims were killed inside a car that is still here on the scene. Now, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office tells us that this building was being rented out to host a teen night last night. Detectives say about 150 to 200 teens were here at the warehouse, simply known as the club. Detectives tell us that the event had to be shut down early, though, because numerous fights began breaking out inside. And they say two armed security guards were trying to get the kids to leave last night when they heard fireworks and then gunshots in the parking lot. Deputy Deputies say the security guards told them that they saw someone inside of a car firing a gun. Those security guards were in fear for their lives and returned fire, killing the two people inside the car. Now, Colonel Donna Luzinski also tells us it is believed that one of those two people that was shot inside the car was the initial shooter. But she also tells me that they haven't yet confirmed whether either of those victims were actually armed. And we haven't been in that car because we don't have a search warrant yet. So that's something we're, we're going to look for once we're able to get in there to see if there are firearms in that car. And at this point, investigators cannot confirm the age or the identities of the victims. But Colonel Luzinski tells me that based on the fact that there was a teen night going on here last night, she believes that they, that they were here in relation to that. So they might have been teens themselves. They might have been parents here to pick up teens. We're just not sure at this point. We're waiting on the medical examiner to identify the victims and we're waiting on more updates throughout the morning. This is still very much an ongoing and early investigation, guys. 
All right, any new information, uh, jump back in with us. Kelly Cowan, Live for us. Thank you. Also new this morning, Pasco Fire Rescue was busy with a two alarm fire early this morning at a building filled floor to ceiling with bikes. The fire was at a business on State Road 52. Firefighters had a hard time stopping the fire too since the business is a bicycle shop and the rubber tires gave fuel to the fire. No one was in the building at the time of the fire. New details in the deadly beating death of a little boy in Sefner. 31 year old Jack Montgomery appeared before a Hillsborough County judge on charges of aggravated child abuse and the murder of his seven year old stepson Bryce Russell. Deputies say Montgomery punched the boy and tossed his body into furniture at the Masters Inn Hotel in Sefner. Officials believe the child died because of trauma. Montgomery admitted to throwing the child on the bed after catching him trying to get a cookie, but he claims the child wasn't seriously hurt. Officials say he was watching the children because her mother was working. St. Petersburg police are looking for the person who killed a man and critically injured the man's sister. Sometime over the weekend, they say a brother and sister in their 60s were attacked at a home on Elk Cam Boulevard in Coquina Key. 68-year-old Paul Dumas died. His 63-year-old sister, Elaine Vadina, was badly beaten. It was not until Monday morning that someone heard Vadina's cries for help. Police are looking for 44-year-old Otis Joseph Henderson. They say he was known to the brother and sister and was arguing with them before the attack. The cause of death along with um, the details of, of what happened are under investigation. We're still trying to figure out exactly what happened and why. It was a very brutal attack. According to the Florida Department of Corrections, Henderson was released from prison back in August after serving 14 years for burglary. Upon his release, he listed the victim's home on El Kim Boulevard as his address. A boat crash in Sarasota lands four people in the hospital. FWC investigators say the catamaran overturned in Sarasota Bay on New Year's. Two adults, two children were on board. They were all taken to the hospital, but we're told everyone is expected to be okay. We are learning more this morning about the victims in a deadly plane crash in Costa Rica. A Pinellas County family on board did not survive. Doctors Mitchell and Leslie Weiss and their two children, Hannah and Ari, died when that plane went down shortly after takeoff. Fox 13's Marissa Lynn spoke to those close to the family still in shock at the news. All gone far too soon. Doctors Mitchell and Leslie Weiss and their two teenage children, Hannah and Ari, were vacationing in Costa Rica over the holidays when their plane crashed there, leaving behind a community in shock. A neighbor, a neighbor that's a good neighbor down the street that you sit and you talk to and you find out about their kids and what's happening in school and, and work. And um, it, it is heartbreaking. It really is. Not just a neighbor. Dr. Leslie Weiss was a pediatrician who had cared for Hornsby's son since birth. Dr. Mitchell Weiss was a radiologist. They were always happy, smiling, always wanting to know about my son. And it's still heartbreaking just hearing the news that something so close, just a few hundred feet down the street, you know, the people that lived four houses away, that the whole family would be, you know, taken away so easily. The family was very involved at the congregation B'nai Israel, where they were members. The children were leaders at their school. I think we feel lost. The Weiss's son, Ari, was a student at Shorecrest Prep. Their daughter, Hannah, graduated from there in 2016 and had since been studying at Columbia University. Both of them really full of energy and, and life. And, um, you know, we feel very fortunate to have um, had them with us for the time that we did. All 12 on board the single engine plane were killed New Year's Eve. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused the plane to crash. Witnesses say they saw the plane nosedive just minutes after it had taken off. You have a, a bunch of students that are in shock and are grieving right now, um, but you have a lot of other families and parents, um, an entire community that is likewise in shock. And uh, it's, it's enormously unusual uh, to have a tragedy upon a tragedy upon a tragedy um, like this. Marissa Lynn, Fox 13 News. And Marissa says that a family of five from New York, the two Costa Rican pilots, plus an employee of Backroads, which is the company that organized the trip, were also killed in the crash. Shorecrest Pep plans to have counselors available to students when they return to classes next week. Happening today, Mayor Rick Kreisman will be sworn into office this morning in St. Petersburg. This happens at noon in front of City Hall. Everyone is invited to come watch. Several city council members will also be sworn in at 11. 
Now that the holidays are behind us, it's time to get rid of your Christmas tree. Many communities will begin recycling trees this week. You need to leave it on the curb after taking off all of the ornaments and other decorations. You also need to cut the tree into smaller sections, no bigger than four feet. If your community does not pick up trees, you can drop them off at the county's waste disposal center. City of Tampa will start curbside collection today on your regularly scheduled yard waste collection day. Are you looking for something to do today while the kids are out of school? The Glazer Children's Museum will have free admission starting at noon. Children's Board of Hillsborough County is hosting free admission Tuesday. The museum is in downtown Tampa, if you've never been. Mm -hmm. Department of Justice believes they have a plan that will crack down on opioid abuse. I find out how they plan to put this plan into place. Plus, the first day of recreational marijuana sales in California made for extra long lines at dispensaries. Why so many first timers decided to give it a try. We just touched 611 and it's 41 degrees at Tampa International. Ouch. 37 in Brooksville, 34 in Ocala. Let's factor in the wind. Feels like freezing. In Lakeland, feels like 28 degrees in Brooksville, feels like 33 in Sarasota. Bundle up because even though the wind may die down a little bit, the cloud cover is going to keep it cold. 53 degrees for your high today and some rain tomorrow morning with a high in the mid 50s for tomorrow afternoon. You're watching Good Day Tampa Bay. When recreational marijuana became legal in California, people who had never had the drug before decided to give it a shot. And Fox's Frank Mailcoat has that more on the long lines at newly licensed dispensaries in the state. It's green day at Oakland's Harborside. Lots of green coming in and lots of green going out. This is like Disneyland, but way better. Harborside is one of the nation's largest marijuana medical dispensaries. And today their doors just got even bigger opening to a completely new kind of customer. It's historic. I don't know. Yeah, just uh, being part of history. First time? Absolutely. What are your impressions? Um, orderly, clean, seems like people are behaving, everything looks great. No medical card required today. As long as you're 21, you are free to buy. And many, like first-time pot shopper Lori Driscoll, decided to give it a try, but admits there is a learning curve. I think there's a whole typology around different types and what it does and what it feels like, and I don't know anything about it, so I'd like to know. It's a brave new world. Isn't yeah, it is. For 72-year-old Diana Burke of Walnut Creek, it's a throwback to the 60s. She's been pot-free for decades. I will probably get a small, tiny amount. Yeah. Give yeah. it a go? And give it a go, probably in edibles. I probably won't smoke it, yeah. won't vape it, and I'll probably have it in a tiny cookie or something. So there's a coffee and a hazel. Harborside estimates that over a third of today's customers are likely pot newcomers, and they expect that number to grow in the new year. On a really busy day here at Harborside, we'll sell over $100,000 worth of cannabis, and this is going to be a very busy day. <laughs> okay. All right, 616, now the Justice Department has a strategy to help combat opioid abuse. They have a new data-driven early warning system for 12 regions that are ravaged by opioid abuse. The system helps track doctors prescribing the most opioids. It also tracks how far a patient travels to get their prescription. The Opioid Fraud and Abuse Detection Unit is also tracking opioid deaths if the victim received a prescription within 60 days. Some of the experts say the focus may cause patients who legitimately need pills to be abandoned by doctors who fear prosecution. And look at this. If you're thinking it's cold here, look at what the cold is doing in Arkansas. Fountains are frozen. At least these two fountains, anyway. Residents hope that they will uh, thaw today. The high is expected to be 28 degrees. <laughs> it's chilly. Now that's cold. Mm -hmm. We're chilly. We're bigger. We're, we're more Are than we gonna go with cold? Is, what, I'm going to go with degrees? cold. That's the face you got there, Dave. See, it's I'm the gonna... wind, too. The wind is whipping this morning. That's the thing. It is whipping. Yeah, that wind is definitely not helping. Let's start with the actual air temperatures. And I got mid-30s. Yes, the mid-30s up in Citrus County. And some upper 30s for Brooksville, Wesley Chapel, Brandon, Newport, Ritchie. 41 degrees in Sarasota, 41 in Clearwater. That's not the whole story, though, because you've got this wind, which has been gusting close to 30 miles per hour at times. Look at the wind gust in Bartow at 29, 32 in St. Petersburg, 25 
the wind gust in Sarasota. Pretty cold start. So you factor in the wind to the actual temperature and it creates what we call wind chill. What it feels like on the exposed skin. 32 is what the feels like temperature is in Brandon, 34 in Tampa, 35 in St. Petersburg. It feels like the upper 20s for Hernando and Citrus County. And here's your reason why we have this wind chill advisory out, which will be out through 10 o'clock this morning. These forecast wind chills are going to be just barely above freezing in many spots. So let's put this computer model into motion. This is your forecast wind chill as we go through the next couple of days. And notice by the time we get into the weekend, we can finally get rid of and erode this cold air, but it's only Tuesday. So we've got several days of this colder air. Now, it's going to stay relatively quiet today, cloudy, other than the tiniest pocket of drizzle, no big deal. But off to the northwest, we're going to start to see a disturbance, and that's going to come running right through the state early tomorrow morning, and that's going to bring some rain through. So we may see this cold, nasty little rain tomorrow. First thing, but it should be out of here by the afternoon. No, we're not anticipating any frozen precipitation. No, 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 no. But you up across I-10, they may. That's how close it's going to come. But for us, it's going to be a cold rain tomorrow morning. Today, cloudy, breezy, raw, 53 degrees for your high temperature. Tonight, we're going back in the 30s and 40s again. Cloud cover, some rain around tomorrow morning, another breezy day, highs in the mid 50s. And even though we get sunshine back on Thursday, we're still going to struggle to make 56. We're back up closer to 60 degrees by Friday. Look at the Friday morning, Saturday morning low temperatures, though, with the clear skies, radiational cooling is going to bring us down the mid to upper 30s. So it's going to take several days, Vanessa, to get out of this cold, cold air mass. Oh, I can see that. Man, look at those 30s. Dave, thank you. 620 is the time, so let's update our roadways. We do have reports of a malfunctioning traffic signal at 15th and Fowler. So just a refresher, flashing red is you're basically going to be treating that as a stop sign and then flashing yellow drivers proceed through the intersection with some caution, unless of course you have an officer on scene directing traffic, although we haven't heard any reports of that happening uh, quite yet. With that, we'll take a quick tour of our majors. Here's what it's looking like drive time wise on 275 northbound drivers coming from the St. Pete side of the Howard Franklin to the interchange down town spending a couple minutes shy of 15 to pass through that stretch. Eight minutes between Bruce B. Downs and I-4 exits on 75 South and then westbound drivers headed towards 75. If you're getting on in the Plant City area should be about a 10 minute drive. Hey, thank you, Vanessa. Chocolate lovers, listen up. Your favorite treat may soon be extinct. What? Scientists believe the plants could disappear as early as 2050. They say this is thanks to warmer temperatures and drier weather conditions. Researchers are now working on a solution and they need one stat. Yeah, seriously. Uh, this will definitely ruin any weight loss resolutions. Today is National Buffet Day. Many people like to go to the buffets when they're deciding to go out and eat. Buffet concept is nothing new. First originated during the middle of the 16th century. The more modern buffet began uh, at the beginning of the 19th century. All right, still ahead this morning on Good Day. If your New Year's resolution included eating healthier, we're going to take you inside one store to learn the first steps to getting started. And a rogue squirrel attacks the police. More on this dramatic body camera video and find out if the suspect got away. Okay, it's time to see what's clicking on the web. Yes, 2018 is here and folks are searching and seeking a change in their diet and a top trending topic is top food trends. And as Rufus here with all the hot clicks morning hey. right up your alley. Good morning. Right. I suppose so. So listen to this. The top expected trend of exotic foods. This includes new restaurants. It combines flavors from different cultures in the number two spot plant based or vegan diets in 2017 folks eating plant based diets went up 6% nationwide, which means expect a surge in plant based technology foods like Sushi made of tomatoes. At number four, root to stem. This would be dishes similar to the farm to table trend, which was big in 2016 and last year. Also, food delivery services. I'm mm -hmm. not sure, big surprise there, but mm -hmm. uh, those are expected to see a surge in 2018. Already, 25% of Americans use these services for their convenience. 
I don't know you, about you guys, I'm feeling some hot soup, yeah. <laughs> personally. Yeah, right. And this dictionary giant, Merriam-Webster, considering changing the name dog. The term doggos is internet speak for dogs, mm -hmm. and apparently what? doggos, like puppers, doggos. Mm. Uh -oh. well, well, puppers is fun, doggos. <laughs> This is the word, apparently. It's uh, quickly spreading across social media. The word has gotten so popular that the dictionary deciders at Merriam-Webster deemed that doggo is a, quote, word that we're watching in 2018. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to turn your radio on. The squirrel turned it on? Three. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Critter escaping the cold attacks a New York police officer, and as you saw there, it is all caught on a body camera. Family called 911 when a squirrel got inside their home and started stealing cookies. You see the squirrel was running around the kitchen. He had some stolen goods. And then the moment of truth, the lunge. After some commotion, police were able to get the squirrel and let him back outside. Oh my, that's terrifying. Ooh, that's yeah. a vicious squirrel. No. That's like the worst nightmare. <laughs> Who would have thought oh, something so, so furry and, yeah. and fluffy and small it's coming could be at so rabid. vicious? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you walk in, you can hear him say, can we turn your radio down? And apparently the squirrel turned the radio on while invading. It was a cookie party. A cookie you don't party. interrupt the cookie party. <laughs> Too much sugar. <laughs> so, Too much you. sugar. <laughs> All right, when Good Day continues, a major city plagued with gun violence is celebrating a big win. Why they hope a new trend continues. Plus some stunning surprises at some bowl games yesterday. A quick recap if you missed the games. Congrats, Roll time. congrats. That's right. How cold was it Monday? Well, so cold a polar bear plunge had to be canceled. I'm Kelly Wright in New York with a look at frigid temperatures nationwide. You're watching Good Day Tampa Bay. Good morning, everybody. 6.30 on this January 2nd. I'm Walter Allen. And I'm Laura Moody. Good morning. Waking up this morning may be hard to get out of bed. It is cold. And if it's, this is hard for you, you're not alone. People across the area are bundled up in hoodies and jackets, hats and gloves. This week, we need to pack away the swimsuits and brace for the cold. So what's ahead of us for the rest of today? What about the rest of the week? Let's get to uh, meteorologist Dave Osterberg. Ooh. I know. Well, you start things off with a wind chill advisory, and we've got that through 10 o'clock this morning for everybody. As you know, it feels like it's down around freezing. Here are your current air temperatures. 36 in Crystal River, 37 in Brooksville, 38 in Newport Ritchie, 39 in Brandon, 41 in Tampa, down through Sarasota, which is also at 41, and then sort of mid-40s or so as you're going further inland. But then you factor in the wind and it feels like freezing in Brandon, in Lakeland. It feels like 35 at Wesley Chapel, 34 in Tampa, 28 is the wind chill factor in Hernando County. Bundle up with all you got. I mean, uh, even though <laughs> we're not gonna get any rain today, uh, we're still not gonna see a lot of sunshine and the temperatures are gonna be a struggle just to make it back to the lower 50s. Vanessa. <laughs> Struggle to get out of bed. I know, no kidding. It's too cold. Dave, thank you. 632. I guess the good news is our roads are remaining nice and clear and quiet. We've got a live look on 275 in Hillsborough County. This is going to be the Beers Avenue camera southbound is headed this way. And then those taillights we see are going to be headed northbound. Quiet either which way you go. We are still crash free on our majors. And you can see some of the toll routes we're checking out including the Selman Expressway here should be up to speed. Lots of green all the way around. So please enjoy in the meantime. Uh, now you know what the temperature is going to be when you venture outside. Yeah, the kids are out of school and a lot of people have the work week off. So you might decide to stay in. I don't know. Fox 13's Marissa Lynn caught up with some folks not willing to let the cold stop their New Year's resolution. All right, good morning. Well, we are not talking about New Year's resolutions here. We're talking about safety, and we're talking about safety and working out in these cold temperatures. We're hovering around freezing 40 degrees around here this morning. It certainly feels a lot colder with the wind chill. And so we've got folks here at Camp Gladiator who are working out this morning. They started working out here at 5 o'clock this morning in Camp Gladiator. They have several locations throughout the Bay Area where they're working out in parking lots like this one here. Uh, and I want to grab Coach Katie, who is in charge here and you've been out here since early this morning yep. it's been very cold all morning what is the one piece of advice that you made sure that these folks had before they came out here today uh, before they showed up today it was check the temperature 
um, and know what layers to wear. So we talk about making sure, you know, you have tight fitted clothes underneath and it gets looser as you get um, to the outer layer so that they can peel off and they can move as they start to warm up. You can see um, from the time they showed up this morning until now, they've really lost a lot of layers because they're really getting warm. Which is surprising. I mean, yeah. I guess maybe because I've just been standing around here, but um, the, is there anything that you're, you're watching out for in terms of just safety and making sure that they don't pull anything? Yes, I'm, the biggest key for me is their range of motion. So I'm really watching the way that they're um, running, the way that they're, I have them doing high skips. So I'm watching their knees, their hips, uh, when they're doing squats and push-ups. I just watch and make sure that their range of motion is appropriate and correct so that they don't injure themselves. And I'm assuming that there are more people out there who want to work out in these cold temperatures, brave the cold temps. What is the one piece of advice you have for them who may you know, not have a coach like you around? Just know what you're heading into. So if you're going on a run and you're gonna be heading into the wind, make sure that your gear is proper and that you've warmed up properly. Do not do a cold start on a day like today. And a lot of people ask, well, how long should I warm up for? Is there any perfect answer to that? Um, know your body, so at least a good five minutes. Um, and out here, I prefer 10 just to make sure that we've given them a full head to toe warm up. But at least five, just make sure that everything's loose and then you can get going. Perfect, all right. Coach Katie Isaac with Camp Gladiator, thank you so much. And we will toss it back to you guys in the studio. If you're brave enough to uh, brave these cold temperatures out here, make sure to check out Camp Gladiator this week, especially since those cold temperatures are certainly going to be sticking around. Back to you. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> It's the same reason I work out inside during the summer. No thanks. All right, our uh, frigid temperatures, hours are just the tip of the iceberg uh, that the rest of the country is feeling. Fox News' Kelly Wright reports on the freezing conditions. Frigid, bone-chilling temperatures continue plaguing much of the U.S. Topeka, Kansas was minus 14 Monday, 17 below in Indianapolis, and 30 below in Montana. Anyone dealing with those temperatures would be unlikely to find sympathy in northern North Dakota. The town of Minot, 40 degrees below zero. In Michigan, a frozen track switch contributed to delays on an Amtrak train. A Wisconsin polar bear plunge was the coldest to date, negative 20 degrees. Another plunge in Indiana was actually canceled because of the chill. Even the South was not spared. These fountains were no match for the cold in Southwest Arkansas. Conditions in Central Texas hampered efforts to put out a house fire. Had ice accumulate on a couple of floors, had some firefighters slip and go down uh, from the, the ice, ice they created. That's not normally something that we even worry about. Ice covered branches in Washington state eventually snapped, bringing down power lines and dozens of poles. Just in a small area, we, we counted up over 50 down poles, power poles. Thousands were still without power and heat Monday night. New York City saw a high of 17 degrees on New Year's Day, downright balmy after Sunday's wind chill made it feel like negative 10. Officials in Milwaukee have not released details, but say sub-zero conditions are blamed for at least two deaths. In New York, Kelly Wright, Fox News. International travelers arriving in the United States had to deal with some delays last night. An outage briefly affected the U.S. Customs and Border Protection's processing system. Customs and Border Protection officers were forced to process arriving passengers using backup procedures at some airports. But officials say the backup system did not affect the standards for security screening. The city of Chicago ended 2017 with some improvements in gun violence. The total number of homicides and shootings in the Windy City dropped last year, but they still had more than 600 homicides. That number was down from 771 in 2016. The number of shootings dropped from 3,550 in 2016 to 2,785 in 2017. That was shootings. Chicago police are optimistic that 2018 will continue the trend of decreased violence. A former Miss America and Fox News anchor is taking over the troubled Miss America organization. Gretchen Carlson has been named the new chairwoman of the Miss America organization's board of directors. The old CEO resigned last month for sending sexist emails about former Miss America contestants. Carlson won the pageant in 1989 and tweeted she's honored to move this iconic program forward. 
What a day for college football. A double overtime game sets up the national championship, and a Florida school goes undefeated. Let's start with all the bowl games, uh, especially local. Here in the Outback Bowl, the Michigan Wolverines started strong against South Carolina. Ben Mason caps a seven-play, 72-yard drive with the goal line score. Michigan takes a 19-3 lead into the late third quarter. But Will Muschamp and his Gamecocks finally get the offense clicking. Jake Benley to Shea Smith in stride, 53 yards. South Carolina scores 23 consecutive points. Great opportunity for the Wolverines here on the ensuing possession. Down at the Carolina 5, Brandon Peters. Wrong jersey. Picked off in the end zone by Jamarcus King. Eight turnovers in this game. Michigan had five of them. South Carolina wins the Outback Bowl. 26 to 19 up in Atlanta UCF still unbeaten taking on Auburn in the Peach Bowl huge afternoon for McKenzie Milton the nice quarterback had 350 all purpose yards one rushing touchdown two through the air this one to Diedrich Snelson give UCF a 27 20 lead defensive side of the ball trying to hold back the dangerous Auburn attack Jaquan Burkett interception 45 yards to the end zone the Knights take a 34 to 20 lead Finish off a perfect season. Auburn fans can't believe it. 34 to 27 Peach Bowl champions. Vanessa, the Rose Bowl number two Oklahoma Sooners against the number three Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs scored 24 straight points to take a 38 to 31 lead. Heisman winner Baker Mayfield with some fourth quarter magic. Dimitri Flowers in the back of the end zone. All tied up. Second overtime, OU ball first. Austin Sieber, 27 yards out, blocked by Lorenzo Carter. Georgia simply needs a field goal to win it. Why do you need a field goal when you can give it to Sony Michelle? Not even touched, barely anyways. 27 yards for the touchdown. He ran for 181 yards, three scores in the game. Georgia, Rose Bowl champion. They will play for the national title one week from today, 54 to 48, the final. And a rematch of the college football playoff national championship from a year ago at Ray J. Somewhat close into the third, 10 to 6. Bama Clemson driving. Kelly Bryant is hit. Right here. Picked off by Duran Payne. And a return. They get a horse collar penalty on top of that. Big gain. Uh, Alabama takes over deep in Clemson territory. Steps out a one yard pass for a touchdown. Bama would roll to the win. In the Sugar Bowl, 24 to 6, they face Georgia in the college football playoff national championship. So that young man, Payne, got the interception. He also got the touchdown pass. Yeah. So very good Huge hands night. on, on, on the yeah. big guy. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think, hold on, let me fully pull up the tweet here. Hmm. Uh, Clemson fails to score a touchdown for the second time in 131 games under Dabo Sweeney. Yeah. So your defense is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Roll Tide. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yesterday was a, the kind of day in our house where Roll Tide was a hello, a oh, goodbye, yeah. <laughs> how you doing, a congratulations. Everything. All of it. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah day. big day in my household. All right. Uh, heading to Orlando. Some parks are closed today because of the cold. The information is coming up next. Plus, a church comes close to tragedy on New Year's Eve because of celebratory gunfire. The bullet flies through the window out of nowhere. We'll be right back. Making headlines around Florida this morning. Despite warnings not to fire guns in celebration of the new year, several people in central Florida did not listen. A church full of people came close to tragedy when someone outside the fellowship hall fired into the air. And the congregation was celebrating New Year's when stray bullets came through a window and came close to hitting people. Witnesses say the bullet was still smoking when it landed on the ground. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but a little girl leaving a different church also in Orlando she was struck in the arm by a stray bullet as her family left a midnight service ringing in the new year. That nine-year-old little girl will be okay, they say. A new year means lawmakers will get back to work soon. Florida legislature will soon consider a bill to allow police to ticket someone for texting and driving, making it a primary offense. Now, currently, Florida law says texting by non-commercial drivers is a secondary offense. That means officers must see another violation like speeding or illegal lane changes before they can cite a driver for texting. 43 states fully banned texting and driving. Due to the unusually cold weather in Florida, Universal's Volcano Bay Water Park will remain closed today through Friday. Universal says it's just too cold outside. I don't know who would want to get in the water anyways. <laughs> park is definitely scheduled to reopen on Saturday. And Typhoon Lagoon also closed for a while. That Disney Water Park will shut its doors through Thursday. Oh, with good you, reason, too. Imagine getting the water right now. Oh. No, thank you. <laughs> You know what I was doing this past weekend? 
was I was up swimming with the manatees, and that water's cold. It's still though, it's still cold. I'm, I'm finally acclimating to this, you know, my blood's thinning out more and more as I live down here longer. It, you know, folks, this is, this is one of those mornings that you're just like, oh, I mean, you gotta get out of bed, you gotta go back to work after a nice long vacation, and it's 38 degrees for you in New Tampa. 39 in West Chase, over in Brandon, over in Palm Harbor. I got mid 30s to the north, so you got Crystal River and Inverness, 34, 36 degrees. It's 37 in Brooksville, lower 40s for Bradenton and Sarasota, Lakewood Ranch, Mayaka City at 43, Bartos at 43, and mid to upper 40s as you go into Highlands County. So you've got temperatures obviously well below normal, but then you've got this. And this is wind speeds that have been gusting in the last few minutes to between 23 and 32 miles per hour. So you take that very gusty wind and you add in that temperature and it creates what we call a wind chill factor. What it really feels like on the exposed skin. And it's in the upper 20s now. Crystal River, Brooksville. It feels like freezing in Lakeland. 34 in Tampa, 35 in St. Petersburg. This is really what it feels like out there. So the wind chill advisory that we have for you is, I mean, literally till 10 o'clock this morning. Could be worse. It feels like it's 12 degrees in Pensacola right now and 21 in Jacksonville. Talk about a plunge of Arctic air. A lot of cloud cover will continue to stream through the area for today. Tomorrow morning, a weak disturbance it's way back up here to the northwest. That is going to come moving through and that's going to provide some very cold rain showers for us. So at this time tomorrow morning, we're going to be dealing with some showers. Yeah, 53 your high for today. Tonight overnight lows will be in the mid 40s with lots of cloud cover, uh, maybe a little bit less wind. Tomorrow still breezy, 55, but we're going to add some showers in there. Morning hours getting out of here though in the early afternoon. That's the good news and we can finally at least bring the sunshine back even though our high temperatures don't get back to normal Vanessa until Monday. So early next week. Okay. Mm, all right, Dave. Thank you. So quick check on our roads. It's coming up on 649 right now. Sun City Center drivers looks like this crash has already moved to the shoulder, but you do want to use some caution at 301 with the intersection with Sun City Center Boulevard. We did have some blockage earlier in the middle of that intersection, but as I mentioned, it moved off to the side. Uh, we want to give you a heads up on a closure that's going to start tomorrow. So this is not in effect right now, but midnight. So basically 1201. Tomorrow morning, very, very early, westbound Kennedy Boulevard is essentially going to be closing. Uh, this is going to be all the way through 4 p.m. Thursday. There's utility work that's starting, and the stretch affected is going to be Ashley Drive to North Boulevard, so just outside the downtown area. Uh, we're seeing from the city of Tampa they're going to keep one lane open, but really that's only going to be for local business access. So for folks who usually just travel through the area for their commute, you'll have to keep that in mind. You will be detoured on site, so make sure you're planning extra time. Once again, this is starting tomorrow. All right, thank you, Vanessa. It is January 2nd, and the banks and stock market open for the first day of the new year. Fox Business correspondent Hillary Vaughn joins us for a preview of what this year's stock market has in store. Bear back. Now, whether you're hoping to hit it big in the stock market or hit big. Uh with Mega Millions Jackpot or Powerball, plenty of chances to increase your income in 2018. Yeah, from the Fox Business Network studios, Hillary Vaughn is with us now on the stock market's first day of 2018. Hey, Hillary. Hey, good morning. So 2017 was a epic year for the stock market. The Dow surged 25%. The Nasdaq even more than that, 28% over the past year. That's how much growth, it, growth it's seen. The S&P up 19%. A lot of this has to do with optimism surrounding President Trump's tax plan. And also there is some expectation that the $1.4 trillion sitting overseas, that that's going to be brought back and that'll be good for business, but also good for everyone else. So we'll see if that plans out. But starting 2018, futures are slightly up. So we'll see if this year will be as big as the last. All right, let's talk about uh, some gambling, other gambling anyway, anyways. Uh, Mega Millions, Powerball, they were huge going into 2018. 
If you're feeling lucky, I would say this is the time to do it because, or to get a ticket. Mega Millions is at 343 million. That drawing is tonight. The Powerball tomorrow, that's at 440 million. Uh, drawings were over the weekend. No one had the winning numbers, so they're drawing again today and tomorrow. So if you're feeling lucky, then uh, this, uh, this could be a big, big win for somebody out there. You never know. Okay. All right, Hillary Vaughn, live for us from New York. Thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks, Sia. All right, uh, let's get to this now. New Year's resolutions typically mean clean eating for some. Fox 13's Jen Epstein is in North Lakeland at a store determined to help you keep your clean eating resolution. Hey, Jen. Hey, good morning, Lori. What do they say about an apple? An apple a day keeps the doctor away? Mm -hmm. Not just apples. There are lots of good, healthy food that you can eat for 2018. And we're all talking about resolutions, Laura. We were talking about it yesterday, workout resolutions. Well, 2018 can be a year of healthy and clean living. Is it as hard as it sounds, though? Sergio is with us this morning. We are at Chamberlain's Health Food Store in Lakeland. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? This is a beautiful store. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, we, we seem to think so, too, and a lot of our customers do. We're, we're excited about starting the new year. and. Uh, and just doing what we do, you know, eating clean and uh, helping everybody out. Eating clean to me sounds like I can never eat pizza or cereal or my Diet Cokes ever again. Well, it really depends. Uh, there's a lot of people that look at it different ways. Um, I mean, you want to you want to make sure you're eating stuff that's good, rich in fiber, um, eating clean, uh, organic produce when possible. Um, Speaking of like produce, that. it yes. can be overwhelming. You don't know what clean eating is. You can come here, ask someone who works here, like Absolutely. Sergio. Look at all this produce, fresh produce. Yes, yes. So uh, at Chamberlain's, we, we feature exclusively uh, organic produce, okay. meaning that when you come in and you shop with us, you don't have to worry about uh, certain items being non-organic or being pesticide ridden, anything like that. Um, so all of the produce that we carry is uh, certified organic. And that's just one part of what you serve just here? Just one small piece, exactly. So we'll talk about that coming up in the later hours. Maybe some cool recipes that you can use in 2018. Why I see not? that there is a, a juice bar behind us. Yes, there is. Yes, so there there's is. plenty of options for 2018, how to live and eat clean. And we'll talk with Sergio throughout the morning. So stay with us. All back right. to you guys. Good. Thank you, Jen. Look forward to that. I need all the help I can get. As I said well, yesterday, I need everything I can get. Uh, on a more serious note, 656 fights inside a team club overnight. Force organizers to shut the doors early but the violence continues out into the parking lot. And now it's believed two teenagers are dead, shot by armed security guards. Kelly Cowan is live for us at the club with the latest developments. And congratulations to the UCF Knights, the only undefeated team coming up. Their head coach finally breaks the silence on whether the Knights should have been given a playoff spot. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 30s to the north. Tampa's at 41, 39 in Brandon as we approach the 7 o'clock hour. That's not the whole story, though, because we've got wind chill factors below at or below freezing numerous locations. Brandon, Lakeland, Leesburg, Brooksville, Crystal River, to name a few. It's a very cold morning outside, and honestly, it's not going to warm up all that much. 53 for today. Tomorrow, some rain in the morning with a high of 55. And Thursday, at least the sun comes back. Highs will be in the mid-50s.